Welcome everybody to a CUDA worksheet tutorial. We are doing functions, domain, and range review. So this is going to be a quick one. I'm trying to do this very uh, precisely and succinctly. So uh, for those of you who have already had some exposure to this, it's going to be kind of like a, just a reminder. Um, we have f of negative 4, and we're going to plug it in there and there. So if you have two x's, you need to plug it in for both. So we have negative 3, and we're going to have to square this negative 4 first before multiplying it by negative 3. Plug in negative 4, and then we add 1. And that's going to be equal to f of negative 4. Square the negative 4, we get 16 times the negative 3 minus uh, 4. 2 times negative 4 is going to be negative 8, so it's actually going to be minus the negative 8, which is plus 8, and then plus 1. This is going to give us negative 48 plus 9, and that's equal to negative 39 and that's going to be our answer there. F of 0 would be pretty easy. We just plug in 0, we get 0 minus 0 plus 1. It'd be 1 for that. So I did that really quickly just because I really want to get to this part. I think students really struggle with understanding this. The best way to think of it for domain is, and I'm not going to do the set builder notation. I'm just going to do inequality. But for domain is we think about the furthest left to the furthest right. That's our lower limit. This is our upper limit. So I'm going to see, okay, how far to the left does it go? Okay, and then my x is going to be sandwiched in between my lower limit and my upper limit. So if I look here, my furthest left point on the graph is here, and I notice that it's an arrow going to the left. So what does that mean? It means it's going to go to negative infinity. Now, can it be less than or equal to infinity? No, it can't be equal to infinity, so we're going to stick with the less than sign or the greater than sign. So x is greater than negative infinity. Okay, so it go, let's go to the right. Now we're moving to the right. We start left to right for our domain, for our x values, okay? So we go left to right. Our lowest, our lowest value, our furthest left value was negative infinity. So now we're moving to the right, moving to the right, moving to the right. And we see we get to another arrow. So that means it's gonna keep going to the right all the way to positive infinity. Again, it can't be equal to because you can't equal infinity it's not a set number, so our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, or all real numbers. So both of those are acceptable. I'm guessing most of your teachers will want all real numbers. Now our range. Our range, we're talking about the furthest down values, that's our lower limit, and then our upper limit, okay, down to up. So we always start at our lower limit first, which is the furthest down, and then we work our way up. So the furthest down point we have, again, is the same spot, and it's an up arrow, or a down arrow. So that means we're going to go to negative infinity. As we travel up, okay, again, I'm moving this direction. I'm moving this direction. Yeah, I'm going on a diagonal, but I'm only interested in my y values, okay, for the range. And I see I get an up arrow. That means I'm going to be going to positive infinity, okay? So what's, let's, let's kind of do a quick summary in short. For domain, I'm kind of drawing these vertical lines here like this. And I'm interested in, okay, how far to the left does it go to how far to the right does it go? If there's an arrow, that means it's going to go to negative infinity. And then I go to the right. What's my furthest on the right on the graph? It goes, it's an arrow, so it means it's going to go to positive infinity. For range, I like making a little horizontal line here. Okay, and I see that I have my lower limit there, and then my upper limit up here. I go, and because it's arrows, it's going to go to infinity. Okay, so let's do the same thing over here. So I'm going to copy these, paste them over here for my domain, and you'll see, okay, my left limit, my lower limit, there's an arrow, and then my right limit, there's an arrow. So what does this mean? Well, because it was moving to the right as I got to the arrow, my lower limit for my domain, and again, my domain is possible values for x, is negative infinity. And then as I'm moving to the right, I get to another arrow, so it's positive infinity. So there's my domain. My domain's all real numbers again. Oh, I forgot to say, for the, over here, because the uh, range was negative infinity to positive, also all real numbers. So my range now, okay, I'm going to copy these little bars here, okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this guy up, Move work on the upper limit later, but we start with my lower limit. So you see that the lowest point is right there. Okay, I didn't get it quite exactly. Right there. We'll call that negative 4. 
So my lower limit is negative 4. And it's part of a solid line or a dot or however you want to say it. It's not an open circle. That's the only exception. And it's not infinity. So it's going to be equal to. So y is greater than or equal to negative 4. And then what's the upper limit? Well, our upper limit we have here. How high up does it go? Well, I start from here. I go up, 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 up. On my graph, it hits an arrow. Okay, so if I'm looking here, it hits an arrow. That means it's going to go all the way to infinity, positive infinity. So that is my value here. I can also write this like that. That's also acceptable. Okay, now both of these are functions because they pass the vertical line test. Each x input has only one output. So if I were to draw my vertical line, okay, and I were to pass these vertical lines through these points, I see it only touches one point all along the way, okay. But if I look at these ones, look, this is not a function because it touches more than one point. Each input has more than one output. Okay, Each x has more than one y, which is not the definition of a function. So here, that is not true. So both of these are not functions that we're going to talk about. Now, I still we can still find the domain and range, though. So let's go ahead and work on that. Okay, So I'm going to work on my domain first. I'm going to paste it here, my little brackets. Okay move this guy over here. So I start on the left side, my furthest left point, boom, negative three. So I know I'm going to start my domain at negative three, domain, negative three. And it can't be equal to because it's a solid line or a solid dot. So it's solid, so it's like that. Now I'm going to work my way from the left all the way to the right. I get to the extreme of the graph and I see arrows. What does that mean? It's going to go to infinity. Okay, my range, same deal. Okay, make my horizontal line. Okay, make sure it's nice and even. I start here and look, I have an arrow. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to be going to negative infinity because it's an arrow going down is less than y. And as I continue this up, I get to another arrow for the extreme of the graph on the top. So it's positive infinity. One more of these problems. And I'm going to call it a video. So we get here, and we get to uh, negative 2 for my x. So negative 2 is less than or equal to x. And it's less than or equal to how far to the right does it go? A left to right, I get to positive 6. And it can equal 6, so that is my domain. Okay, I'm going to get to my range now. So range is down to up. So I'm going to start at my lower limit here, okay, and I'm going to move this up. It's, nope, sorry, let me start here, negative 6, jot this down. So it's negative 6, it's a solid line, it can equal negative 6. I move it up and I get to positive 2 for the y value, and it can equal it. Okay, as a little added bonus, we can go over these ones. So for this one, uh, this one's not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test, but our x values, our domain is going to be a set of x values. Okay, or just one x value. So the only x value that we have here is x equals negative 3. These are all the points, negative 3, comma 4, negative 3, comma 0, and then negative 3, comma negative 4. So you see that our y values, this is going to be our range, are these three values here. So my range is going to be three points. Range is, and I'm going to make a little squiggly bracket, it's going to be negative 4, comma 0, comma 4. So that one's pretty simple, and it's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Uh, this one, okay, this one's uh, also a function, okay? This one's not a function. Uh, these ones are fairly simple. This one's going to be very similar to, 16 is going to be similar to 8 because there's going to be a set uh, uh, top and bottom. Uh, this one's going to be similar to number one because it has, or yeah, which was this one, number five. And then this one's a little bit different, so I'll go over it very quickly. There's only one value for, uh, well, my domain is, it goes all the way from the left to the right, so it's all real numbers. Left, all the way to the right, all real numbers. My range, though, only has one value, okay, as I go from, as I move my little bar up, it only hits one value, and that's y equals range, y equals negative 2.
So I did this quickly and I didn't go over some of these problems because the main emphasis I wanted is my graphs. That's what people struggle with the most. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the comprehensive one if you want different uh, intervals, more graphs. Um, it's another CUDA worksheet tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.